Hi, everybody. Hey, family, friends, how are you doing again on another Sunday night? But back in Mexico. That's right. We on the run for God. <laughs> <laughs> Not from God, but for God. That's right. And it's been really great being back here in Ajijic, Mexico, seeing all of our friends showing up at the dance. The, the morning right after we get off our plane. Showing yeah. up to a home cooked meal Showing with up our to friends. A home -cooked, just five star food waiting five for us. Five star right food. Once we walked in the gate. Uh, five star love. And it's just been a really magical time to be back in our community and excited about what is God doing in our life? What is Creator creating, enabling us to afford? Our inheritance which is happiness yes and are we taking that That's opportunity right. to take that happiness mm, good question beautiful so tonight yeah. we're gonna Start. random yeah. randomly uh we're gonna uh, randomize it as you call the non-randomizer the never random number generator that's yeah. what we're gonna use <laughs> at the end of class we always go that's so that strange is, how that was exactly, exactly what we were going through. Exactly. Yeah. Total, precise uh, mirror of what we were just going through. What a coincidence, mm -hmm. said us never with random mm -hmm. number generator. But first we're going to do a little bit of tuning in and just connecting with our higher self, the one we want to decide for us where in A Course in Miracles that we read from. So we'll do that for just a few minutes and then we'll see what happens. You never know. Never know. Never know. <laughs> but someone does know. But we do know it's going to be good when you're deciding with love. Amen. All right. So, if you haven't already, close your eyes and take a breath. Whew, and breathe. Let go of everything that's not happening right now. We're just gonna tune in to what's happening right now. And as we tune in to the right now, the present moment only now, let's also tune our awareness for the presence that abides in the present. loving right mind. What does your loving right mind feel like right now? Let's communicate with our loving right mind and ask our loving right mind for help. And let's ask our loving right mind for guidance. Spirit of healing, we give you this healing circle. We give you this time that we are gathering here together that we might be healed by truth. Together, we give you this opportunity, this healing space. We ask you to enter into the center of it and use it for the healing of the world through us today. Be you in charge and decide for us where in A Course in Miracles we read. But you know our call for love, you know our call for help, and you know exactly how to answer it in your brilliant and loving way.
right, just bring your awareness back. All right. Jen, I like how it feels when we pray together. Mm, beautiful. Okay, so now we go to the random number generator. We're all set up, all ready to go. All we need is somebody to volunteer to push oh, this button. Oh. Look. Look at that. Come on it's up. It's the eager, it's the Ooh. eager boy in the front row. Ooh, it's the one That's who wants it. Holy and Spirit I'm answer. Right in front of everybody. You know he wants it bad. He ran up here for that. He wants the, he wants the truth bad. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, <laughs> Y'all going, what does 16 mean? <laughs> well, 16 is about relationships. 16. 16 is all about, about relationships. relationships. Our favorite topic. Let's go back to your 16th birthday when you maybe had your first relationship. And maybe made a few mistakes that night. You think? <laughs> you think? Maybe a lot. Oh, it was prom night, so, you know, it wasn't yes. my fault. Yeah. You have to go to a table oh, yeah, contest. Yes. Got to go all the way. Yeah, there you go. So now we'll find out how many sections are in chapter 16, the relationship chapter. This is the chapter that a lot of people stop reading Course in Miracles at. They read up to chapter 16. It's awesome. And then as soon as they get to chapter 16, they go, oh, I don't understand this at all. And then they put it down. All right, and there were seven, and so now we got to ask this question again. Who wants to be the no, second? Said, <laughs> yeah. Look at Brave that. Brave soul. Look at that. She doesn't know what she's doing. <laughs> oh. Oh. Number one. Number one. Uh -oh. Start at the beginning That's right. of, of the chapter. chapter. <laughs> Your spirit gives you a big old warning. <laughs> and asks you how bad you want it. <laughs> I want you to ask yourself that question right at the beginning of that chapter. Yeah, and the title. How bad do you want it? Looking at the special relationship. <laughs> Let's take a look at it. Shall we? With the magnifying glass, maybe. Yeah, that's right. And uh, and we do have uh, air sickness bags ready if you need them right underneath your chair. <laughs> 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 when you feel like you might throw up as you hear what you do. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. Yes, we need to take this. Okay. okay. Looking at the special relationship. All right. True empathy. How? What does it mean to be empathetic to somebody? What is true empathy? Well, to empathize does not mean to join in suffering. That's not what it means to empathize with somebody. Oh, you poor dear, that must be horrible. To empathize does not mean to join in somebody's suffering because joining into somebody's suffering, suffering is what you must refuse to understand. Now, joining in other people's suffering, that is the ego's interpretation of empathy. And this kind of empathy, joining with other people's suffering, is always always used to form a special relationship. What's a special relationship? That's a relationship in which the suffering is shared. <laughs> I have some what, suffering. Would you share oh, it with me? Oh, thank you. I was hoping you would only want me to share your suffering. Yeah, and if you love me, <laughs> you will share it with me. Absolutely. Yes, that is what a special relationship is where we join in each other's suffering. We empathize with each other's suffering. Let me be sick with you. Yes, let me be angry with you. Oh, that's where the real deal is made. The capacity to empathize is very useful to Holy Spirit. So your ability to empathize, very useful for Spirit, provided you let Spirit use empathy in Spirit's way. Oh. Uh, <laughs> well, how does spirit empathize? <laughs> exactly the opposite of how you do it. <laughs> oh. 
So we want to give our capacity to empathize, the capacity to feel other people's feelings is very useful. That's a good thing, but only when you're using it like the way spirit uses empathy and spirit's way of using empathy is very different. For starters, spirit doesn't understand suffering and then spirit um, doesn't want you, he says his way is very different. He does not understand suffering and spirit would have you teach that it is not understandable. That was a mouthful. <laughs> and so when we suffer, what I'm hearing here is we try to figure out why we're suffering. Yes. Where a spirit knows it's impossible for the child of creation mm -hmm. to suffer. Yes. And so spirit doesn't, will never understand the suffering. Because mm -hmm. it never makes sense. Never makes sense. Mm -hmm. We're the only one believing that we can suffer. Then that our suffering makes sense. And it's justified. Exactly. So we're trying to understand, well, why am I suffering? I know I'm suffering because of you. That's why. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> Maybe if I get rid of you, I yeah, won't suffer. Yeah, exactly. Mm. I'm pretty smart, <laughs> says the ego. But it's, Holy Spirit doesn't want us to understand our suffering or the suffering of each other. Holy Spirit wants us to empathize in its way. Mm-hmm. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't see the suffering, but it does see we're suffering from the yes. perception yes. believed in the suffering. Yes. And so the Holy Spirit is going to work with us because that's where we're at. Exactly. Thankfully. Suffering. Exactly. The Holy Spirit's not going to say, well, there's no such thing as suffering. I'll come back <laughs> when you get, get yourself that. right. Mm -hmm. No. Holy Spirit's going to teach you what to do when you are in the presence of another person's suffering, which is a very practical thing to know what to do, how to do spirit style, because there's a lot of suffering people around here. This is where people who like to suffer come for a vacation. To earth. <laughs> to earth. <laughs> I'd love to suffer for fun. Okay, let's go to earth. And so knowing how to empathize with people in a way that you don't join in their suffering is a very practical thing to know how to do here. And so we're going to learn now what when you bring your suffering story, when your sad story, you bring you bring it to spirit, what to, how does spirit empathize with you? Does spirit go, oh God, I can't believe you did that again. Oh my God, this is bad. How does spirit empathize with you when you bring it to spirit? So we gotta learn how to do that. It says, now when spirit relates through you, Holy Spirit, your higher self, does not relate through your ego or your suffering to another ego or their suffering. Holy Spirit's not like, I'll tell you about suffering, let's, let's relate with, to each other about our suffering. That's not how spirit relates. Oh yeah, well how do you think I felt when you <laughs> yes. slammed the door in my and face? And how and how do you think I felt when you had done that to me the week before? Right. So we just keep exchanging exactly. our suffering. That's right, we just keep exchanging we keep joining in each other's suffering. You know, thinking that we're empathizing with each other. Or when somebody comes to me and says, I'm suffering, somebody hurt me. Uh, I join in their suffering and go, oh my God, I can't they believe that, that they did that they to really you. Are evil. That must really hurt. They really are evil. That's, that's the e ego relating uh, one to another. That's one ego relating to another ego. Your higher loving mind does not join in others' pain. <laughs> I'll be angry with you. I'll be hurt with you. You don't join in another's pain knowing that healing pain is not accomplished by delusional attempts to enter into their suffering and lighten their suffering by sharing their suffering. Their suffering, which actually really is a delusion. Whew. Wow. 
So if somebody comes to me, the reason I said sick earlier is when we're perceiving that we're suffering and this has happened to me, I'm a victim of this and that, and then my best friend here supposedly <laughs> agrees with my suffering and how justified I am in this belief system that I have yes. and their belief system and so they're not being what the Course calls us to be the savior of the world right. which is to perform a miracle. Mm -hmm. Anybody can talk about problems but not many people can tell people to put your troubles down and stand and walk. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it really takes a savior to look at your friend and to hear when they're Suffering. doing what I do, the same thing, complain about mm -hmm. things that are triggering me, bothering me. Mm -hmm. And I want somebody to join me in, yes. in agreeing that that's justified yes. how I feel. Yes, that I'm right, I'm justified in how I feel. And a real savior comes along and as tempting as that mm -hmm. is, mm -hmm. and easy as that is, mm -hmm. is to be calling on spirit during that conversation. Mm -hmm. What would you have me say here? During the meditation, right. that was my prayer. Mm -hmm. Just what would you have me say, if anything? Spirit? Exactly. Letting, letting spirit relate through you. In spirit's way. So, yeah. How would you have me empathize with this person? What would you have me say to this person who's, who's suffering or sharing their suffering with me and wanting me to join in their suffering with them? Right. You know, uh, how letting spirit relate through me. Yeah, beautiful. All right, let's all take a breath. Woo wee. Okay, what to do? How how to be there for somebody when they're suffering in a way that doesn't make their suffering deeper and yours too. Because if you agree with them, if you if agree if you agree with them in their grievance and help them to strengthen their grievance then you just deepened their suffering and yours now too. And what is that? Special. And, and, and that's what we call a special relationship. Right. When that's what we're doing. We're not really empathizing, letting spirit relate through us. We're doing that. And then now we have a special relationship. A special relationship is wherein the universal calling to all creation is that everything is good, everything is working out, everything is helpful. And the specialness is we come along and we found something in creation that isn't quite right. And we want to change, fix, correct it, work done, repair it. And the opportunity is brought to us, can we help in this suffering that they're perceiving and not join in it with them? or we're gonna join it with them and then really help solidify it. Mm -hmm. So now the sickness is even two times stronger because now there's two of us in agreement to that bullshit, yes. but we still both believe it. So we're giving strength to it. And the world's waiting for those to arise and no matter what the proof in the pudding is, mm -hmm. to be able to stand in agreement not with each other's stories, but yes. with the story of creation. Yes. And even if it's hard to believe in this story that I just heard from you, how this could possibly be good, mm -hmm. I'm gonna try it though this time and see what happens if I don't stand in alignment on our both behalf and see what another way to look at this story is might be. Yes, exactly. Like, it's a call for love. You know, like that story. You know, instead of, instead of joining with them in their grievance, seeing that it's a call for love. They are calling for love. The person they're complaining about is calling for love and you are calling for love. Help me. Yes. <laughs> and so we're being taught how to be an assistant. To yes, help. exactly. How to be truly helpful um, when people are suffering. Yes. Which is the ultimate help for you when you're suffering. So, it says, the paragraph two, the clearest proof that empathy as the ego uses empathy is destructive lies in the fact that the ego's empathy is applied only to certain types of problems and in certain people. And these certain people and problems, the ego empathy selects out and joins with the, them. 
and the ego empathy never joins except to strengthen itself. The ego never empathizes except to strengthen itself, except to strengthen suffering. So you're only gonna share your grievance with somebody that you feel relatively good is gonna agree with you. And you only and give, give strength. and you only give empathy. You only empathize with certain people. Like I empathize with these people's problems, but I don't empathize with these people's problems. You know, ego selects out. You know, who it's very selective in its empathizing. I care about your problems, but not anybody else's problems. Because I can relate to your problems. Exactly. And give strength to them. Exactly. Exactly. So it says, um, it says these certain people and certain types of problems the ego empathy selects out joins forces with, which means the ego never joins except to strengthen itself suffering. Having identified what the ego thinks it understands, the ego sees itself and the ego would increase itself by sharing what is like itself. It's all about itself. Ego is always about ego. Which is a problem. Which is suffering. Mm -hmm. So ego is always in it. Whatever the ego does, it's, it's in it for itself. We only suffer from a problem. Yes. I have a problem with my bank account, so I'm suffering. Yes. I have a problem with my relationship, so I'm suffering. Yes. So the ego is just coming up with problems after problems after problems until it gets you to identify with one and then find somebody else that will help mm -hmm. parent that and problem And agree with, you. with it, agree with it. Give it strength. Join in that problem. That's right. Make no mistake about this maneuver that the ego does. The ego always empathizes to weaken. Whew. That's the only time the ego, oh, I empathize with your problem. When the ego is empathizing with your problem, it's only because it wants to make your problem bigger and further weaken you. For both of you. Dang. And to weaken is always to attack. So even when the ego looks so kind and so empathetic, I'm joining with you in your suffering. I'm such a loving friend. But make no mistake, that's not the ego being friendly. That's the ego always going for attack. Wow. Right. And once we've identified with that joining, oh, how horrible that is, that yes. story you told me. I would feel the same way you would. What a bastard they are. Oh, how horrible. I hope you Some never people. see them again. What's wrong with people? What's wrong with people? As soon as you... <laughs> Enter, we're pretty good at it. We're experts at it. And we were talking today, laughing in the, in the pool, how we're all addicted, addicted. to attack. Addicted, like a junkie, Just like a junkie who needs a fix every day. How AA has nothing on us. Nothing on our yeah. addiction to judging. Hello, my name attacking. is Greg, I love to attack. I'm, I'm an attack well, junkie. Well, how do you do that, Greg? Well, somebody comes to me with a problem. <laughs> And I agree with them. And, the and I attack them. And then the next day, an unexpected thing happens in my bank it's account. Very and I weird. feel victimized and attacked. <laughs> yes. But I think it's because of what happened to my bank account, exactly. not because I gave permission to the universe no. to please attack me as I'm attacking my brothers and sisters by joining them <laughs> in all of these stories. <laughs> and the cleverness of the ego is it has me looking outside of myself from where all of these attacks are coming from, yes. which are all coming from me and my brother joining together. Ooh, wait. Well, we can get that one right. Greg, you're gonna get us censored. They're gonna take, they're gonna ban us from Facebook. You keep telling the truth like that. Come on, Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> well, luckily you got your YouTube subscription I, up to I know, 000, right? not, not yet. 10, 10 till. <laughs> 10 more people. But I, I always tell myself that, uh, that as much censoring as YouTube and Facebook do, that we're totally safe because when people don't understand what we're saying, yeah. 
the sensors, when they look at it, they're like, I, what are they? Uh, what are they? That, can, even, that can't what? affect I, nothing. That can't be dangerous. I don't even Just know what they're saying. Just because you don't, uh, you know, <laughs> gossip with other people about the problem that other people are doing, that's not going to change nothing. Yeah. They're no threat. So we, so we don't have to worry about being censored yeah. on YouTube or Facebook at all. We're yeah. protected like that. <laughs> yeah, the truly dangerous. <laughs> all right. So now we're on paragraph three. All right. Any questions? Any thoughts? That's moral stuff. Yeah, that's, that's what we used to call friendship. It's yeah. what if the ego believes that anger makes friends. Yeah. That's the way the ego makes friends. Mm -hmm. It's like, let's complain about something together. Let's blame somebody else together. What do we have in common? Yeah. The best way to make enemy. a friend is they agree with you on That's what right. you are judging. A friend of my That's enemy so is a friend of mine. That political person's an idiot. Aren't they? Mm -hmm. Now you've joined. Are the women friends and influence you? <laughs> yes. Yes. But Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. That's what we call friendship. Yeah. That very well said. That's what we call friendship. And it wakens us up to become true friends. To, yes. to learn to become true friends. Yes. What does it mean to be a real friend? What does yeah. it really mean to empathize with our brothers if who are really suffering? Care about what does it really mean to help them, them yeah. when they're suffering? Like people, you know, our brothers are suffering around us, and because we're offended by it because they're projecting it on us, we attack them. How if, insane is that? If it was possible to look at okay, my brother or sister just came to me with this grievance and they're in pain. And to remember that this pain came to them because of an invitation they made before that. So everything that's happening, you requested. And, but we can break that cycle right now by stop this complaining game. And stop attacking our brothers and sisters when they're calling for love. And, right. and when they're calling for love, um, let's stop attacking them and see it as a call for love. And let's clarify that because we've been talking about for a few days that yes. term, yes. call for that, love. Let's talk about that term. Can we talk about that? I would love it. Well, Can we talk? The, the call for love, which is a common expression in A Course in Miracles, we've come to take it into a different ball playing field of a call for love is, is when somebody's coming to you with a problem and what they're really saying is here's something that God, as big as creator is, cannot handle this because it's too big. It's bigger than God. This problem. That's what a call for love is in my perspective is somebody's bringing something with the belief that this is bigger than God can fix. That's why I'm upset about it. If I knew that God could take care of it instantaneously, like to, to the point that it's not even a problem, then I could never be upset. But I'm upset because I obviously think something's happening that's so big that not even God can fix it. The only way this can be fixed is for me to leave this freaking relationship right now. Get on a plane and leave. Separation. Right. So ego's always the ego's and, answer. And when I come to somebody else and say, and it's because she did this to me. And they yes. go, oh my gosh, what? She did what? She what? what? Oh, I would have already that, been that on sound, that plane. That sounds like Anna. That yeah, totally sounds totally. like Anna. Oh, I, oh, Anna did that to me one she, time. Was she drunk? What? <laughs> Probably. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, who gave her the key? I did, but not that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, and so how do we stop it? How do we stop it? Well, part of it's trying to remember when that situation is going on. Okay, what am I supposed to do? What to, how to empathize. And, okay, how, uh, while that's happening, spirit, please relate through me. Spirit, please empathize with this person through me. So because that's the initially, first, we're that's the first prayer. Through. Exactly. When, when, you, when you've suffered enough and you come back to your mind, then you'll do, you'll remember, oh yeah. I, all I need to do is say, Spirit, please empathize with this person through me so that I don't empathize with them, my ego to their ego. And then I make an invitation also now for attack to come into me in many different forms, mm -hmm. physically, mentally, spiritually, financially. financially. Mm -hmm. 
illness, yeah. so many ways. Yes. Okay, so now it's going to teach us what it really means to empathize and how spirit empathizes. He says, you do not know what empathizing means. Dang it. Period. <laughs> but I'm an, I'm an empath. Of course yeah. I know what it means to be empath. I'm an empath. I Everybody agrees. To... I passed that test. Yes. No, well, you don't know how to empathize. <laughs> you know how to join in suffering. But you don't know how to yeah, empathize. You know how to feel that pain. And join in it. But of this you may be sure. If you will merely sit quietly by and let spirit relate or empathize through you, then you will empathize with their strength instead of their weakness. And then both of you will gain in strength and not in weakness. We were talking earlier today how the Course is always saying, this is easy. And here we hear, if you will merely sit quietly. In other words, don't get caught up in the story they're telling you. You can listen to it, but don't let your mind start racing. Mm -hmm, yeah. Get quiet. And how are you going to get quiet but to let go? Take a breath. Take a breath. Spirit. Take a breath. You hear the story they're telling me, Spirit? Merely sit quietly by, take a breath. Ooh. Ooh, you don't have to respond. Oh. Take a breath. <sighs> Merely sit quietly by and let Spirit empathize through you. Let Spirit relate through you. How much better of a plan would that be than to let me relate through me? Yeah, we know to them. our track record. Because we're only going to relate our ego to their ego. I know that. Someone did that to me too, but no, let me tell you how happen. that went. <laughs> I had that happen. Let me I, tell you all about it. I feel you. I feel your pain. Let's, let's salute to that. Let's, let's join in our righteous indignation for how somebody could do that to us without us even ever asking for it or ever doing it ourselves joining in that righteous indignation as if we had nothing to do with it but if we sit quietly by take a breath ask spirit to empathize or to relate through you to them then you'll notice the next thing you'll know is you're joining with their strengths. You're noticing their strength which that they their weren't, strength. which they weren't noticing when they were complaining. Their strength is your same strength. Exactly. And then now you guys are joining on each on the fact of your strength, which is our both of us, our higher loving light mind. Wow. So. I used to be tempted to empathize with their suffering and to join in their suffering and how they're a victim. But now I'm empathizing with how much strength they obviously actually have. Mm -hmm. Obviously. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, so then it says your part when you are in the presence of someone who's suffering, here's your part, only to remember this. You do not want anything that you value to come of the relationship. Don't try to get anything from that relationship right now. Remember that. Remember that you want neither to hurt this relationship nor to heal this relationship in your own way. Remember that. I don't want to hurt this relationship or heal this relationship in my own way. Yeah, what you think is going to be right yes, to respond. Yes, exactly. What they need to hear. What, what, you know, exactly. I know how to heal this relationship. I know how to hurt this relationship. You do not know what healing is. <laughs> Period. Yeah. You don't know how to empathize, you don't know what empathy is, and you don't know what healing is, period. Stop trying to heal this relationship in your own way. I'll show you. I'm going to school him. That's me healing the relationship in my own way. Or I'll, I'll show you. I'll ignore you. 
that's me trying to hurt the relationship or heal it in my own way. Mm -hmm. Remember, you don't know what healing is, and uh, well, if you wouldn't know what something is, then it would be obvious you wouldn't know how to do it. Exactly. You don't even know what it is, and so you wouldn't be trying. But we try to think, okay, I don't, I don't need to call on my higher loving yeah. self on our behalf. Right. I, I know how to respond in a exactly. loving way here. It's obvious. And it'd be helpful. It's obvious. And let me, and then I'll get my friends to agree with me that this is obviously the right way to respond to this. I don't need to ask Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. All my friends agree with me. I know, I know <laughs> That's why they're my friends. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't need to ask Spirit how to respond to this, uh, how to, to relate through me to this person. I know. I've got training in this. Yes. We've been together a long time. I know. Yeah. I know what it means <laughs> when he says that and does that. Mm -hmm. So uh, you you remember this when you feel that pain. Remember, sit quietly by. Remember, you don't know what it means to heal. You don't know what it means to empathize, um, and that you don't want to hurt this relationship or to heal it in your own way right now. Okay? That's a th that was an instruction. He says. Uh, all you have learned of empathy is from the past. <laughs> the way you've done it. So exactly. Now. And we know how that, that result of that, okay, we know what came from that. The past just kept getting repeated. And there is nothing from the past that you want to share. P.S. For there is nothing in the past that you want to keep. Oh, really? <laughs> Are wow. you enjoying all this attack wow. in your life? Yes. Or, or can we stop it? Yes. And so everything that's been coming in the past has been a life of attack. Yes. An attack in a, a many hundreds of different ways. Mm -hmm. where, Helpful for us was attack. Where, where happiness, anything that, by the way, where happiness is not its outcome is an attack on ourself. Mm -hmm. That we joined in. Because the only inheritance that creation has for us is constant, pure bliss, mm -hmm. constantly. Mm -hmm. And once that has been stopped, it's because of only of our imitation. Mm -hmm. And our imitation is by attack. Yep. And the other person with us is that's why they're calling for help, is they're trying to attack themselves mm -hmm. by this grievance, by yes. this anger, by this upset. This projection. And it's so easy to identify with them and right join away with and them to join with them in it. Like, that's what because friends so do. Many, yeah. That's why we're friends, dang it. Yes. And so all of being helpful to others when they're suffering that I learned is from the past. And whatever I learned about the past, about being helpful, I don't want to keep. <laughs> no. I did not know how to be helpful in the past. I was, when I was thinking I was being helpful, I was very damaging. You know, I was, I didn't know how to help a relationship for real. Um, and I was being hurtful to it, thinking I was being helpful, thinking I was being loving. And that's what I hear it saying to us tonight is, uh, don't even try to think of how to heal. Don't try to think of what is helpful. Try to remember that you need to call on Holy Spirit, yes. how Holy Spirit should relate yeah. through you mm -hmm. to this all yes. the time. Not as an ego, uh, uh, selective about mm -hmm. who to use that power on and who not to use it. Yes. Well, this is a small yes. decisionary. Well, this person deserves here. I don't it. need to call on Spirit on this mm -hmm. one. Don't be selective in that. Beautiful. Okay, so now it's literally going to tell us how to do it. All right. Okay, who likes the how-to part? I love it's like it. let's get down to the nuts and bolts. Okay, that's the way we like it. You know, Hopefully give it, we give, like it, it. give it to me mm -hmm. in a formula. You know, that I can write down in steps. Okay. First of all, do not use empathy to make the past real and so to perpetuate it. That's the first thing. Do not empathize with the past, their past, and so to perpetuate their past. Here's what you do. Step gently aside 
and let the healing be done for you. Step aside and let the healing be done for you. For them, to them. That's what a real healer does. That's a, what a real healer does. A real does. healer steps aside yes. quietly. Yeah, takes yeah. a breath. Takes a breath. Takes a breath. Thinks about what's best for them and yes. for you right what now. Really as want. this story just was presented. Holy Spirit, please empathize and relate through me right now. Do I want to be a healer? Or a judge? A healer or, or a hurter? Or an executor. Yeah, a and healer. And if I am an executor, I'm executing my sibling yes. and myself together. Yes, and I will be causing myself so much pain. So much guilt, and so much regret. Pain for yes, them. exactly. When I'm empathizing through the ego, when I'm empathizing with their weakness, you know, yes, you are a victim. Yes, you do. You you should be angry. You should be hurt. Yes, someone hurt me too. That's that's empathizing for weakness. And so this is saying, don't do that. And instead of doing that. Step gently aside and let the empathizing be done for you. And the way you do that is to just keep one thought in mind and don't lose sight of this one thought, however tempted you may be to judge the situation. One thought. Like no matter thought. how tempted you are to judge the relationship, which we know will be a lot. <laughs> One we're easily thought. tempted. One thought. This is the only thought. Yes, I one thought. Down. What is it? All Keep right. only right. one thought right in down. mind. And do not lose sight of this one thought. However tempted you may be to judge the situation and to determine your response by judging it. I don't need to write it down. It's just one thought. I could remember this. Surely I could remember sure. this. Sure. Well, thought. I'll never forget this. Should I? Maybe I should write okay. it down. I don't know. Let's see if I can. In other remember. words, focus your mind only on this. Okay. Here's the one thought. I am not alone. I'm not alone? Right now. I am not alone right now. It's not just me and this person. <laughs> I am not alone right now. And I would not intrude the past, my past, upon my guest, which with a capital G. I am not alone. Spirit is here with me, and I'm not going to intrude my past upon the guest who is here with me. The guest. Not their past. Yes. My past. Yes. Yes. I have invited the guest with a capital G, Holy Spirit, and guess what? That's why he's here. Holy Spirit is here, and I don't need to do anything right now except not to interfere with the mm. guest who is here because I invited that guest. You know, we're doing this broadcast with this angel behind this statue and just imagining that as uh, we were literally having this conversation today in the pool uh, with uh, a friend, Sabrina, and we were saying, let's, let's unite together. When one of us is weak, let's have cold words with each other. We're yes. joking around. Let's have we like made a, a pact. We were making a pact. A pact. So. When one of us is weak, in other words, getting in our ego, how can the others in our pack mm -hmm. be committed to, this is what we were just sharing this afternoon, how can we be committed to help each other? And we we're going code words like karma. Let's, uh, stuff call like for that. love. Yeah, call for love. Uh, things that would remind us that it's a call for love. Yeah, it's a call for love. That they're calling for, for love. Don't they're be, really calling for love. Don't beat them up. Don't be offended. Don't take it personal. Don't take it personal. And so, you know, let's let's help each other to remember to see uh, when we're in our ego, which won't be long. Again, 
Help, let's help each other remember it's a call for love, 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 it's a call for love. And I love it because this afternoon we, we were coming up with a good plan. And the plan was is let us, me, Greg, let me help Anna when she's calling for love, love, when she's identifying with uh, being a victim. No matter how tempted he may be, to yeah. judge my situ my my call for love. But A Course in Miracles random number generator took that story we created today mm -hmm. and said that's really a good starting point is to remember you want to be helpful, mm -hmm. yes. not to beat them up. And to be helpful is to call in the, yes. the ace in the, the hole. The guest with a capital G, the call guest. Call in the guest. And the guest will only come if you remember to call on the guest, Light. but if you're listening to their story and you realize, oh, they're being weak, I'll help them. Mm -hmm. But you forgot the secret ingredient that makes it helpful is to call on yeah. the guest. And there's where Spirit yes. is taking our starting story yes. that we created today mm -hmm. and saying, you're on the right track, yes. but just don't forget to call the guest. Exactly. Do this first. Yeah. Invite in the guest. So when you're in a situation and it's feeling tense and you're ready, you're getting tempted to judge the situation, um, then we're supposed to uh, merely sit quietly by, take a, uh, take a breath and invite in our guest spirit and ask it to relate through us while we step gently aside so that it can talk to or relate to this person that we were very tempted to judge and attack a few moments ago. And the way the Course works in a nutshell in this regard is, imagine the person coming to you, your sibling, your friend, your, your, your offspring of Creator, and they're coming to you, <laughs> and they're holding this sword. It's a, it's a sword that causes, it inflicts pain. And they're holding this painful sword and at that moment, you have the power, literal power, power to, it's like telling somebody to put the gun down yes. out of their mouth. You have the power to tell them to take the gun out of their mouth. By not agreeing with them. Oof. And not only not agreeing with them, but remembering to call on your higher loving mm -hmm. right mind, yes. calling on love to come to and be the answer yes. here. Right. And so we're calling on love, staying there, visualizing them holding a sword at their own throat. Yes. And, and blaming it on you. And the only <laughs> and sometimes they're blaming it on you. Yeah, so it's so usually. easy to take it personal yeah. now and attack back. It's very easy to take it personal. And the greatest savior mm -hmm. of where we're striving to come to is a place where you're hanging on that cross and they're shouting all kinds of ridicules at you. And you're seeing that sword at their own throat and you're going, I'm going to not attack back. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna lay my own life down if I have to. And just be quiet. I'm going to step aside and let the universe come through me and demonstrate what happens when you line up with love and not with attack. Yes. Demonstrate what happens when you don't agree that yeah. I can be attacked no more than you can be. Exactly. And I'm going to let love speak or channel through me uh, the effect and the results of that. And that's where we're all yeah. struggling. You know? Well, that's the lesson. And that's the lesson in the special relationship. That's the lesson. That's the work in the special relationship. And what's the name of the section? Something, what's, uh, the, what's the title? Let's, uh, looking at special relationships. Looking at special relationships. So remember, we're, we're look, here we are looking at special. Special relationship is where, the, where we join in the suffering to make the suffering deeper. And the longer we're together, the more suffering we have with each other. Right, that's a special relationship. The holy relationship is where we, we decide not to empathize with people's suffering and pain, but we do something different. And special is when Creator says that all things were made and everything was very good. And then we come along and find something that's not only not very good, but it's actually very bad. Well, that's special.
when you can come up with something totally contrary and opposite of how Creator decreed and made it to be. That's special. And then it's more special when you get a brother to come in and agree with you on that special find. Yes, that, that exception. That exception to love. Beautiful. Okay. So, so that was, remember the one thought? Let's read that again. Okay. That, that one thought that we either wrote down yes. or we're going to remember <laughs> when this opportunity comes to us and we step out of the way and get quiet. Yes. All right. Okay, here it goes. It says, when you are tempted, remember, you don't want to empathize with them to make the past real and so perpetuate it. Step gently aside and let healing be done for you. Keep but one thought in mind and don't lose sight of it, however tempted you may be, to judge the person and determine your response by judging. Focus your mind only on this. I am not alone. I'm not alone. I'm not alone. We're not alone. I, I'm not alone. I, I came with people. I yeah. got people. <laughs> I, got, <laughs> I got the guests with me. That's yeah. how VIP I am. Mm -hmm. And I would not intrude my past upon my guest. I have invited the guest, and the guest is here. And I don't need to do anything except not to interfere. Not get in the way. With that guest who will relate through me if I let it. Mm. Beautiful. That's what it means to truly empathize. That's what empathy really means. That's what healing really means. True empathy is of spirit who knows what empathy is. You will learn spirit's interpretation of empathy if you let spirit use your capacity for strength, which is empathy, and not for weakness. I let you use my capacity for empathy for strength. Show me how to use the capacity to empathize with strength. Show me how to use it for strength, spirit, because I don't know how to do that. <laughs> As all my friends will tell you. <laughs> Even though I think I do Even know. though I say I do, I act like I do. I certainly act like I do. <laughs> But uh, my friends will tell you I don't always, sometimes. All right. Now, so we want to ask that guest to use our capacity to empathize for strength and not for weakness. Your guest whom you've invited to empathize through you, it will not desert you. Now that you've invited. Once you've invited the guest, the guest is not leaving. I'm not going to be like, I got places to be, you know, I got lots of folks who are calling for love. <laughs> Real popular around here. I'm a very busy spirit. <laughs> I got my hands full. I got my hands full. <laughs> Can you bring me this? Come on. Yeah. This is too big anyway. It says, your guest will not desert you, but be you sure that you do not desert your guest. Mm, how would I do that? Yeah, by ignoring him. <laughs> <laughs> Invite him and then uh, ignore him. Pay no attention to that guest. I don't know who he is. I don't know who let him in. This is so hilarious because <laughs> uh, a little real estate story this past week. I was invited in to a, a meeting. And there were uh, five people in there. And I was invited because I was supposed to be the expert on the conversation. But instead of letting me say anything, <laughs> the very people that invited me to the conversation See? ignored you. Ignored me mm -hmm. by doing all the talking. Mm -hmm. And by their all the talking, mm -hmm. they bought themselves about, I <laughs> estimate, 100 to 150,000 more of a purchase price than I would have <laughs> considered. And that's exactly what we do. And I felt like I knew yes. exactly what to say yes. to help the situation but unless you're invited but even though I was invited mm -hmm. I was ignored mm -hmm. and I wasn't allowed to say anything until after the meeting which was too late 
they, then they asked me what I thought. Right. And that's exactly what we do. And that's what we do. We, it, one of the ways that we, uh, it, that we, what does he say? We invite the professional person to get really good mm -hmm. empathy mm -hmm. and go, I can empathize. Yes, that's right. Let me do it. Oh, you're going to keep talking? Mm -hmm. Are you going to keep opinionating? Yes, it's like inviting a guest to your house and then ignoring them the whole time they're there. And, that's and they're like, uh, you invited me, but you, do you, but you don't want to talk to me? That's why <laughs> You're going to ignore me? To get out of the way and don't, and don't interfere it's, was the last line of that. Exactly. Remember, don't exactly. Interfere. Don't, I will not interfere. It says, humility is strength in this sense only. To recognize and accept the fact that you do not know is to recognize and accept the fact that spirit does know. <sighs> to recognize and accept the fact that spirit does know is that you don't is to recognize that you do not know. Wow. You are not sure that spirit will do spirit's part. Why? Because you've never yet done your part completely. We've never learned how to do this. Completely. Completely. And we're worried that maybe spirit might fail us. Because after all, we have. Yeah, yes, exactly. Exactly. You don't, you don't trust spirit to do spirit's part, which is to relate through you brilliantly for healing. Uh, we don't trust spirit to do that because we have never yet done our part completely. You will not know how to respond to what you do not understand. You will not know how to respond to what you do not understand. Don't be tempted to, be, to yield to the ego's triumphant use of empathy for its glory. I think I understand what's going on, and so I think I know how to respond. And he's saying, don't think that. <laughs> That's a trick. Don't think that. You don't understand the problem, and you don't know how to respond. Yeah, call on me and get quiet. Yeah. That's what the Spirit is saying. You don't know. You do not understand what's going on, and so you don't know how to respond. Be tempted not to think you do. And don't yield to the ego's triumphant use of empathy for its glory. Woo! If you think you know what's going on and you know how to respond, you are going to be blowing the trumpets for the ego. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the triumph of weakness is not what you would offer to another. And yet you know no triumph but the triumph of weakness. Mm. That's all we've experienced. That's all we know. The triumph of weakness. The triumph of weakness is not knowledge. <laughs> weakness never triumphs. And the form of empathy that would bring triumph is so distorted that that empathy that really would bring triumph really imprisons the person you really want to heal. Dang. Come in for help. Um, mm -hmm. You have the key, yeah. which is an invitation to their jail cell. Mm -hmm. And what do we do? We've been trained to to open up their door, but not with spirit's key, with our key, and put ourselves in prison with them. <laughs> and think and call it love. And call it love and compassion. <laughs> and but it really is just a special relationship where we agree to suffer together in the name of love. Mm -hmm. And let's all take a breath, shall we? <laughs> Woo we Our first night back in our See, Say, <laughs> I tell you what. Yeah, the Woo! fireworks are in here tonight, yeah. not outside. <laughs> uh, what, what's the name of the section? Looking, oh, at, the looking at the special relationship. With the We're, magnifying glass. Yes, because in the special relationship is where we suffer the most. So we need to know how to respond to suffering within our relationships in a healing kind of way. All right. Okay, questions or comments? 
Yeah, we're trying to fix our life by working more hours, obtaining more investments. All of these things that we're coming up with to experience a happier, more fulfilled life. But the happier, more fulfilled life is a life that has learned to stop attacking. Mm -hmm. And we only learn that by helping those around us. Put when we're that, tempted to attack. Who are tempted to attack and to join with in attack. That's right. Laying down our, our weapons of judgment, condemnation, and, and uh, it's so hard because it's all we can see in the moment. Mm -hmm. We think in the present moment is, is justified for attack. And it doesn't seem natural how it will help just by me not agreeing to judge and condemn and, and to have what some people might call negative thoughts. Mm -hmm. It doesn't seem like that would be effective. Well, it would be effective if I work 48 hours of overtime this week. That would make a real change in my life, to my bank account. It can't be as simple as literally stop attacking yes. the children of God. Yes. And once you do that, then all, you don't have to all the abundance. work no extra that's right. overtime hours. Then you receive maybe all that's the way need. it will come to you, but maybe it'll be a different way. But it will be coming to you in a way that you enjoy it coming. Because now you believe you deserve it because you didn't attack your Savior. Right. The unredeemed cannot redeem. So the unhealed cannot heal. Right. <laughs> but here I we kept, are, real busy trying to heal I, each other. I kept in our own way. All night. Heal yeah. or heal thyself. Yes, healer. He, we are some unhealed healers trying to heal some folks. Yeah. <laughs> We're busy <laughs> trying to heal everybody. <laughs> they got a sword and we got a sword. Yes. <laughs> We're both swinging around going, how do we get rid of all these cuts off of our yes. body? And why is it that the unhealed are the ones most busy trying to heal other people? <laughs> <laughs> the, and we have to be told this kind of stuff. Did yes. you know that the unredeemed cannot redeem? Mm -hmm. The unhealed cannot, cannot heal? Exactly. And so it says, stop trying to teach spirit how to heal. <laughs> spirit, this is how what you should do with them. Spirit, this is what you should do with them, spirit. Yeah. <laughs> this is how you should judge it, spirit, I'm pretty sure. <laughs> so it's like, I don't need your help in interpreting Anna. <laughs> in fact, all your suggestions have it's, not been helpful. If you really shouldn't be, you know, you should this. get quiet. Yeah, you should be getting quiet right about now. <laughs> <laughs> stop doing anything. Stop being so busy. Exactly. Get Sit out of down. The way stop exactly. Maybe you should meditate for a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> anything. To be quiet. Don't don't attempt to teach spirit how to heal. Remember, you are the learner. You are the one needing healed. Spirit <laughs> is the teacher. Remember that, my kindergarten students of earth. <laughs> Remember, you are the student. Spirit is the teacher. Stop trying to be the teacher. Yes. And heal people in your own way. Do not confuse your role with spirits. Mm. Because you confusing your role with spirits will never bring peace to anyone. <laughs> <laughs> not That's not going to help anybody. It will never bring peace to anyone. Confusing Remember your role that. with yes. your guest's role. Yes, with your guest's role. Exactly. Wow. Dang. In other words, offer your empathy to spirit, your guest. Because it is your guest's perception and your guest's strength that you really want to be sharing. <laughs> and so let your guest offer you its strength, which means its perception to be shared through you instead of trying to help or heal them in your own way. 
Wow. Mm -hmm. That is true. I've noticed that the people in my perception who were the most unhealed in my perception were the ones who were trying to tell me what I should do and how I should be and how it should be the most. Right. Wow. And that's what I'm doing anytime I'm in judgment, anytime I'm reacting to my brother's call for love with anything besides, that's a call for love. Mm -hmm. I am trying to heal it or hurt it in my own way. I'm empathizing with their suffering. The meaning of love is lost in any relationship which looks to weakness and hopes to find weakness there. The power of love, which is love's meaning, lies in the strength of God, which hovers over your relationship and blesses your relationship silently by enveloping your relationship in its healing wings. What? <laughs> so what? Wait, what, what, wait a minute. What's around, what's holding our relationship? Our relationship is in what, whose wings? In these, what? Hey, look at, in these healing and wings. And the healing wings, that's what it said. It literally said healing wings. It said, the meaning of love is lost in any relationship which looks to guilt and hopes to find the meaning of love in guilt. The power of love, which is love's meaning, lies in the strength of God, which hovers over your relationship and blesses your relationship silently by enveloping your relationship in its healing wings. Let that be. And stop trying to substitute your so-called miracle for that. Wow. We can have our relationship enveloped in the wings of spirit, the healing, powerful wings, the power of love enveloping us in its wings. Or we can have our judgments and try to be uh, healing or hurting the relationship in our own way. Those are our options. Feel the power of love and God uh, literally wrapping us up and protecting us, or us as uh, enemy to each other at war. That's that's our option. Or us joining as enemies against yes whatever it is we're yes. going to join exactly in with. exactly. Which then always does come back to in it being enemy between ourselves. Well, it ends up attacking both exactly. of us in its own way. Right? And so those are our options. And it says, uh, let this option of being enveloped in the healing wings of the power of love be what you want instead of trying to substitute your so called relationship miracle for that. That's your options. All right, okay. Oh, this is this is part is very interesting. Okay, but let's take a breath. All right. Okay, questions or comments? Okay. We once said that if a brother asks a foolish thing of you to do it. I hate this part. <laughs> but be certain that this does not mean to do a foolish thing. What's a foolish thing? That would hurt either him or you. So the foolish thing would be to join them in their grievance. Exactly. Uh, if, if they are asking you to do a foolish thing, to do it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean if they're asking something that would be hurtful to you or them. Okay, it says, but be certain that, okay, it says, um, because what would hurt one will hurt the other. Right. So if your brother asks a foolish thing, do it. But not, not if it's going to be hurtful to you or them. Because if it is, it's going to be hurtful to both of you. Exactly. And foolish requests are foolish because for the simple reason that foolish requests conflict because foolish requests contain an element of specialness. 
So what do you do when your brother asks a foolish thing of you? They want you to do a foolish thing. Do it something that does, yeah, some, something that you know that, that really doesn't mean anything, really doesn't accomplish anything. They want, they ask a foolish thing of you. It's saying, do it uh, if, if it doesn't hurt you because, because if you say no to the foolish request, you're actually agreeing with or making real the, their mistake. Only the Holy Spirit recognizes foolish needs as well as real ones. And Spirit will teach you how to meet both their real needs and their foolish needs without losing either. Aha, isn't that nice of Spirit? Spirit is like, I would, I would like, I will help you meet your foolish needs as well as your real needs if you'll give those needs to me. He says, you will be able to meet the foolish needs and the real needs only in secrecy. So we don't know how to meet our real needs and our foolish needs uh, openly. We feel guilty about our foolish needs and so we make them secret. Anybody ever had any foolish needs that they kept secret? One time. One time. <laughs> Bond is only one. Yes, good. It says, and you will think that by meeting the needs of one, the foolish needs, then you do not jeopardize the needs of the other one, the real needs, because you think you can keep your real needs and your foolish needs separate, which means secret from each other. This is not the way. So in our special relationships, uh, we have um, uh, real needs and foolish needs, but in our special relationships, we keep our foolish needs secret. Secret from each other and secret from spirit. And spirit is saying, it, I, only I know how to meet your foolish needs as real as your need, your real needs. Only I know how to meet both with both only benefiting. So, interesting. It says, that's not the way. Keeping your real needs and your foolish needs separate and secret and not bringing them both to spirit to meet, that is not the way because that leads not to light and truth. No needs will be long left unmet if you will leave all the needs to spirit whose function, whose job is to meet those needs, foolish and real. He means Spirit's purpose is also to fulfill my foolish needs also, also. Wow. Meeting your foolish needs and your real needs, not in secret, but both benefiting, that is Spirit's function. That's Spirit's job, not yours. So stop taking your needs to yourself. Stop taking your needs to other people, you know, and don't keep some needs, don't keep some foolish needs secret, you know. I have a secret need to skydive, but I feel guilty about it, so I keep it secret. It says, um, I love it, meeting your foolish needs and your real needs perfectly, that is spirit's function and not your function. Spirit will not meet your real needs and your foolish needs secretly because spirit would share everything you give through spirit. So if you share your real needs through spirit, spirit will share it. If you share your foolish needs, Holy Spirit will share that also. And that is why Holy Spirit gives it. What you give through spirit is for everyone, not for part of everyone. Leave spirit its function and spirit will fulfill it if you but ask spirit to enter your relationships and bless them for you. 
all that we just heard can be yours mm -hmm. for the low price for the low price of asking spirit to enter into your relationships and bless them for you that's the that's the moral of that story and what I hear it also saying about the foolish and the unfoolish needs the real needs is is us giving up the idea of we understand what is foolish exactly. and what is a real need. That's right. It's still in the same category of, of we don't know what's healing, mm -hmm. or what's helpful, yeah. and what isn't helpful or healing. We don't know. We don't know. So we don't know what's foolish and what's not. And the way we've done it in the past, that's why we have to let go of the past, the way it's always been done in the past, <clears throat> is we've not called on a helper. We've not called on an aid. Whenever the story is brought to us, we're given the opportunity at that moment to remember that one thing we got to remember, which is I'm not alone. We're not alone here. Or, or am I going to act like I'm alone? Which would be to make a determination of what's going to be helpful here, all on my own. Yes. <clears throat> and that's how I've always done it in the past. I like to be in control. I like to make decisions. That's a, I like to appear wise. That's one of our foolish needs that we're keeping secret. I like to appear to be a good friend. <laughs> and what better way to agree that that person was an idiot. Because <laughs> everybody knows that's what good friends do. So, we actually finished that. So, thoughts, feelings, mm -hmm. thoughts and feelings. It's yes. I don't know. Yes, yes. I don't know. And that I don't understand. It's really difficult. Yes. Because we're conditioned to learn, 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 learn. Yes. No, 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 no. Yes. You're right, you're right, you're right. You can't make me no mistake. Yes. To realize we do, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, and uh, despite how certain, uh, you know, we can make the belief, establish the belief that. Of course I know, you know. Yeah, I, I understand know. what's going on. Yeah. I'm a mature adult. But it's, we cling to it, right? Yes. And we cling to that rightness of must know, it's cling to the ego. And this whole mind, this whole mind that we're trying to get to this collection that we're dealing with is all just bullshit. Yes. It's all just accumulation of untruths. And yet we're relying on these untruths as if they're true. And the, yes. ego, is, well, the ego is relying on it. Yes. And where my identity, I'm identifying that very mm -hmm. mechanism. Yep. That's right. You know, letting go of that, trusting that there's something else other than that. By saying, I don't know. By saying, I think that's the only way. Let it's go the of only that. way. By saying, I don't know. I, I look at it as it like empties the room of all my knowingness yes. exactly. yeah. or something yeah. now to come in that empty room now of real, of real knowledge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it won't way. ever come in as long as I'm holding on to believing that I do know yeah. and I understand and I know what's best and most helpful. Even though I didn't create you and make you, I, I do know what's best for you. And I I'm understand gonna tell you. what's going on here. I've been in your Yes, I understand. Yeah. I've been there. I get it. I get it. I've been there. Mm -hmm. it's yes. Not true. To recognize right. and accept the fact that you do not know is to recognize and accept the fact that spirit does know. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like the first step in the true step of wisdom. Yes. The, the acknowledgement of I don't know. Yes. And, and there's yes. something that happens. It's something that happened with me was um, my ego is suffering a sense of low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My ego is suffering a sense of low self-esteem. And always will. If when we're let going of our knowing, you know, when we start making that transition in a sense, you know, letting go, there is a sense of, because you're letting go of your assumed knowingness. Mm -hmm. You think it makes you safe. Yeah, it's your rightness. Yes. And in a sense, you're letting go of your so-called rightness. Right, and then you, you think you're, you're letting go of your right-mindedness. Mm -hmm. And you're yeah. not. It's all... Right. Well, think about
about we've been conditioned and taught that knowledge is power. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Knowledge is right. power. So domesticated. And you never want to admit that I don't know. It makes me feel weak. Yes. Inferior, stupid, uh, unequal, lower, and yet. Uh, it makes sense now, unless I become less, he cannot become more. Yeah. Unless I humble myself, I cannot rise. It's like the dark night of the soul. Yeah, you know, you're the kind dark of night of the soul. Letting go of this, but it's like, you're dying of self, that's just selfless. Yeah, we're not separating ourselves from our source. Our source is all knowing. Why would we want to make a decision limited yeah. on just our perspective? Exactly. When we can have the perspective of the whole universe. Right. Yeah. If, if I can say I don't know, then I can accept all the knowledge uh, that love does know. That whole all the veils yeah. and misconceptions. Yes. Why would I want to make a judgment on a little bit of information when I can have all, all of, of the heaven. information? Yeah. Yes. Which is always right now. Always available. Always available right now. It's never gone anywhere. I am not alone. It's our, our true sonship. That true sonship is it's just been veiled by our just erroneous beliefs and this misconception. Mm -hmm. But it's painful. It's, it's not an easy thing. It's painful to let go of the other thing. Yeah. Ego, it's ego death. We, we've clung to this thing. It's our mm -hmm. security. I think you were saying, I was telling Anna how painful that is. You know, it's painful. I mean, just admit it, it's painful. When you're in that emotion of, of I know. Of, I know I'm right about yes. this. And it, it hurts. Yeah, why is that? When you're in, you're so in I know and I'm right is when you're also in the most pain. And Anna made this remark that what you're really feeling is the pain the ego is feeling. Yes. But you've identified with the ego, mm -hmm. thinking that's who you are. Mm -hmm. And therefore, you're identifying with that pain because you're still identifying with the, the ego. ego, which you're not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so you're, it's like you're coming off of your oxygen or something, you know, off of your, uh, what you identified yourself with, this alien creature that you're not. And until you do truly let go of it, the pain won't be gone. Yeah. You're only feeling the ego's pain, not your, not your joy. Yeah. When the ego, when the ego feels like it's dying, it, it never says, it, it never says, I'm dying. No, you're, no. you're allowing too much yeah. peace, too much love, too much joy. You haven't been judging, you haven't been attacking, you haven't been feeling guilty. Whoa, 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 danger, danger. That's, that's when you you know? it's Yes. Attack. Right that, mm -hmm. that's, that's when you're going to, yes. the suffering is going to be severe. That's right. Yeah. And the remedy is, you know, go back to the, mm -hmm. you know, it's going to be trying to coax you back. Exactly. It. It's like, no, mm -hmm. if we don't see it, if we don't see it the way it is, it will, you know. And the way it coaches you back is it sends you your beautiful brother to you with a complaining problem and you identify with it. Your and twin. Goes, I got you. Your Thank inner, you. Your energetic match. It will send you, the universe will send you your energetic match that, in the yeah. form of a person, you know, well, who is well, literally. Yes, exactly. <laughs> beautiful. There's insanity. Beautiful. Anything else? How about you guys? Yes, beautiful. I have a question. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering if either of you or any of you could provide an example where spirit was healing through you and you were empathizing, or spirit was empathizing through you, somebody who came to you with a grievance. What came through you and what was said? Because mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of a very specific instance in my life uh, with a woman who's got that. Um, she really feels this relief when I empathize with her suffering. Yes. It's like, oh, she gets me, yeah, it's fine, right? right? This so, feels good. Yeah. And um, so that's what I've resorted to in that relationship. Mm -hmm. and just being like, oh, this yes. sucks, you know? So I'm just wondering, um, well, let's use that uh, example. example. That's a perfect example yeah. because we can all relate to that. Right. We can all relate to uh, people in our life, and sometimes it's us, 
but who they, what they most appreciate is that they feel like they're not alone in their suffering. And so that's what they're there for. That's what they want, right. you know? And so what do you do in that situation? Well, in that situation, you know, when, when that friend starts with that same um, sharing with you of their suffering, and they're going through it again, and you're thinking to yourself, wow, I see, don't they see the pattern? It's the same old, same old. Um, and while they're talking, you're breathing and you're inviting the guest to empathize through you, remembering you don't want to empathize with their victimness. You don't want to, and then, and then be quiet. And then what comes through you is you will be empathizing with their strength. You'll be like, I noticed that you really have this amazing strength right there. And I, even, I noticed you've used that all this time to like, uh, you know, bring you, you know, bring peace back to you. So, you know, you're in, now you're empathizing with their strength. Right. Everybody has strengths. They want you to empathize with their weakness and then spirit through you will be like, and you're good at this and you're good at that and you've got this going for you and you've got that going for you. Mm -hmm. And hey, why don't you capitalize on that strength and Gorgeous. you've got this resource. Gorgeous. Yeah, that's the piece I think I was missing. So thank you for that. Right you know, it's tricky though too because I feel like in those moments, especially if the ego is really activated, that like, oh, mm -hmm. Ignoring the stuff, not ignoring it, but not not empathizing with it, right? And, and, and focusing on the strength yes. can feel like even more of an attack because he yes. feels like just witness me, you know. Exactly. I want you to say that yes. you know that I'm suffering. Yes. Because, exactly. You know, and you just completely yes. ignore me and some this positive thing. I don't want you to say something positive exactly. right now. I exactly. want you to like Validate. Validate. Yeah. Validate me. Don't tell me there's another way of perceiving if I want to have peace. That would bring death to me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's not the ego. Exactly. And that's when they would feel angry. Which means yeah. that you I, didn't care enough or you didn't, you know. And when I bring death to the ego, what I really did was I invalidated the ego's ability to attack my brother or sister or myself, mm -hmm. I stopped it. That's right. And mm -hmm. by not joining. Mm -hmm. Wow. And if I would have joined, mm -hmm. karma, whatever you want to call that, mm -hmm. that, that, universal, bitch. that universal law, yes. I now join them in the belief that the child of creation can be attacked. Mm -hmm. And in that belief, we think we now manifested for both of us, attack will come to both of us again. Yep. Until one of us is brave enough to step, even though they can't see how it could be possible, I'm not going to align in this story with you for our sake. Even though I have for years. And the beauty of the story is, is so once the, the, that cycle has been mm -hmm. stopped, that snake's head's been cut off mm -hmm. at that head, and attack isn't going to be in, Invited, love's going to be invited. The guest is going to be invited. The guest is going to be invited. And trusted. Then, what I like to try to start focusing on life now is a seed has been planted now so that not attack can come as our effect of our decision that was just now made, but abundant joy, which is our natural inheritance, has been invited. And, and safety. That, and that will be our experience forthcoming soon yes. because it's now what we planted that's right and we we uh they brought a weed to us we pulled the weed out and mm -hmm. and we placed wow. a flower there with it and, and now we're both going to get to enjoy the aroma of that now that's what it means to truly empathize and that's what real healing means yes. that's the real way to answer a call for help when uh it's in your presence not both to plant a weed right next to there with exactly. them and say listen Let's enjoy this. My weed you. is worse than yours. Yeah, no, sure. <laughs> Look, weeds are real. <laughs> I'm here to confirm that. In, you know, in some ways, the greater the reaction from that individual, the better healing is occurring. Yes. yes. Which is hard to hold that space because right. that reaction is so big. Yes. Like, empathize with my anger, yes. my, my sadness. And, yes. And that is the reaction that you would expect if yes. you were truly healing. Exactly. 
But it's hard because it feels counterproductive. Exactly, because because we know that when we are wanted, when we're hurt mm -hmm. and angry, we still want somebody to empathize with us mm -hmm. in our suffering, in our anger and hurt. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still, sh I'm not, you know, I still want that to, to however much degree, you know, that would be however much it's difficult for me to empathize. Mm -hmm. Ego definitely wants to chime in. Yes. <laughs> yes. Especially if the person calling for love is doing it in a, uh, in a way that to you feels like a direct attack then it's really difficult to see it as a call for love. <laughs> it seems very difficult. Yes. <laughs> it's like, no, I do understand uh, that that is not a call for love. <laughs> I understand what's going on that's here. That's an attack. There, that's an attack. That's not a call for love. But it's saying that if you, uh, if you can in that moment um, uh, stop, uh, was it merely sit quiet uh, junior. <laughs> I got this one. step aside and let an expert take over in how to respond so that neither one of you experience attack in your life from this point from forward. this seedling yes. that's been brought forth exactly a miracle worker takes what is a potential real problem and just turns it over mm -hmm. and uh brings forth a miracle, which is healing. Mm -hmm. They heal that situation mm -hmm. as it was brought, and instead of creating more attack, the miracle is they completely reverse the process mm -hmm. and now invited blessings and happiness and joy into not just their own, but into both of those people's lives. Mm -hmm. And that's what the miracle worker does. Isn't that hilarious to, to think that that the, the only thing the miracle worker needs to do is don't attack the one who's calling for healing. Is being a good, <laughs> is being a good host. Exactly, <laughs> referring, don't, referring yeah. everything. Being a good host and yes. not ignoring the host once you've invited them. That's a good host. <laughs> don't invite them in and then ignore them. So rude, yeah. <laughs> and even when you ignore the host, the guest, um, it still doesn't, um, what was the word? It still doesn't uh, uh, leave you. It still doesn't yeah, abandon wanna, they you. They won't abandon you yeah. or desert you. It deserts you. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, so this, and this is all under the teaching of the intro into the special relationship. You know, what a special relationship is and what a uh, special relationship, what the two people in the special relationship do so that their relationship goes from special, which means suffering, to holy, which means uh, joined in uh, spirit strength together, agreeing on spirit's truth together. That's how it goes from special and suffering to uh, holy and uh, powerful and happy. Healed. Healed from a special relationship to a holy relationship, a healed relationship. And it, uh, it all just got laid out in this section. And notice that the primary part, the most fundamental core of, um, uh, element in that process is us, 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 inviting in the guide, our guide, our, our guest, mm -hmm. to relate through us for each other. That's the most loving relationship you can have for another. If you really care about your partner, you'll remember to invite the guest in on a regular, constant basis. Especially when your partner is insane and not in their right mind. Yes. And also you too, of course. That's the is best to time. Remember for them as well as yourself. That's, and then your guest will, let's say this, what does your guest do? The power of God will, in the, which is the meaning of love, will envelop your relationship in its healing wings. <laughs> wow, just because the two people 
invited in the guest to relate through them to each other, even when they were really, 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 really tempted to attack. And those healing wings will take us in flight to a place mm. different than the way we've done it in the past. The battlefield. Love is a battlefield. Feels that separate, that sense of separation. Is yes. Feeling. Yes. There's no separation between the parts. Yes. I love that. That's a beautiful, beautiful. image. Beautiful yeah, image. Beautiful. I saw it, the wings of the wings of the power of love lifting us up off the battlefield and flying toward, you know, somewhere warm and beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> like here. That's the garden. Black here. Beautiful. All right, well let's do announcements and a very quick integration meditation and then and we'll go back out onto into the lab and practice these ideas when they come up. Mm -hmm. And that's where the real work of A Course in yes. Miracles is not just about reading. Mm -hmm. It's about now when our brothers and sisters, our loved ones come to us with these grievances, are we going Against to remember us. to mm -hmm. try to do these things, which is really simple, is to stop, get quiet, and remember to invite mm -hmm. the guest in. How would you have me respond. Respond how through would you me. Have me. Respond how would you through respond me. through me? How would we respond? I don't know what's respond helpful. Respond through me. Respond I don't know through how me. to answer this. Yes, I don't know how to answer this. I'm I don't know how stop. to respond. That's how you get your mind quiet. I don't by understand this. Pretending like you know how to respond yes. to it. You're not getting a quiet mind when you think you already know how to respond, mm -hmm. and they're not even halfway through telling you <laughs> what's going on. Mm -hmm. If yeah. you already know the response, that's probably not mm -hmm. the response. So yeah. You haven't even given yourself time to ask for an invitation of heaven to come and respond. Mm -hmm. And so we're just going to practice this this week, right? And see... What happens? If A Course in Miracles is really true. is it's true. some just words in a book, mm -hmm. or we go, this well, they're really powerful. works. Or wow. If they have real power. Yes. You will see. Absolutely. Yes, and it, get, it gives a little formula, the thing, the one thought to keep in mind. So write it down and memorize it. And memorize it. And then and then use it and see what happens. Yeah, put it on our bathroom mirror. You know mm -hmm. how the game works. Mm -hmm. If you really want to learn something, that's how you do it. Yeah, memory. Yeah, and so we've got to remember, I'm not alone. I'm not alone. I gotta remember not, not to interfere here. Yes. I have invited my guest and my guest is here. Don't ignore him. Uh, I need to do nothing except just not interfere with the guest that I have and get invited and so it's here. That's all you gotta do. Don't do and don't do anything else. Anything else is too much that you should be doing. I don't give strength to weakness by joining weakness. Yes. Beautiful. All right. So announcements are um, uh, we do Sunday, like tonight, transforming relationships through Course of Miracles. Monday night, practical and healing applications of A Course of Miracles. Tuesday night, Greg's Course of Miracles class, all six o'clock central time and um, on, on Facebook. Okay, and then we have um, Ecstatic Dance on Wednesday nights here at Villa de Angel at 7 p.m. And on uh, Saturday mornings, 10 a.m., Ecstatic Dance also. And tomorrow morning here at the Villa, uh, Susanna starts a new uh, yoga class here at the Villa. All right. 10, what time I'm is sorry, 10.30. 10.30? 10.30. Yes, and uh, Elaine does her Course in Miracles class Wednesdays at 4, and Jack does his meditation at 11.11. 11. Okay. All right. There you go. Wow. Here what about you have that? it. I'm telling you, I'm amazed that I remembered all that. <laughs> <laughs> it is a miracle. <laughs> all right. So, Holy Spirit, let's take a breath and breathe.
And let's bring to our awareness someone in our experience who is suffering right now and it appears that they are asking a response from us. They want our empathy. They want our help. They want our empathy. I want you to bring that person or people to your awareness. And I want you to see them and I want you to hear them sharing their suffering with you. Maybe they're even projecting it on you. Maybe it's coming through with anger or maybe they're telling you their, their suffering story. And see them telling their story. And now notice yourself getting quiet taking a breath, knowing that they're just gonna keep talking because that's what they need to do. And then invite in the guest, your guest, your guide. Guest, I invite you in. Spirit, I invite you in to this encounter, this relating. And I want you to tell your guest, I do not know how to heal this person. I do not understand anything. I do not know what anything means. I do not know how to heal. I do not know how to empathize. Please empathize through me to this person. And then see what spirit says or shows you. Now imagine yourself saying that to them. And now notice what happens within them as you shared with them what you heard, what was shared through you. Notice their change. And then notice how you feel in yourself, having recognized their call for love and let spirit answer it through you. Notice how it feels in yourself to truly, actually be helpful and healing to a brother or sister who is calling for help. Nothing feels better. And this, it ha this is how it feels when your own calls for love are being answered. Beautiful, feels so good. That's the real good stuff. And then take a breath. Whew. Wow. Well, good job. Good job practicing. Good job practicing.
You know, like we were talking about, we want to hear it and then actually use it. Bring somebody into your awareness that right now is the one you're tempted to judge. So, good work, guys. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much, you guys, for being here, bringing your physical communication devices here. Thank you. Appreciate you guys. All right. See you next time we see you.